finally it rises. Hey, hey, it's ODB, the Lincoln Attic, back with another video. Thanks for the continued support. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Now, I did want to cover this 62 Lincoln Continental convertible that did not sell on 4-4-2024. So we'll dive into that in a moment. I have not went through a review. In this case, it would be a post review. But uh, just so that everybody knows, this 65 Lincoln Continental limo, which of course in that era was built by Lehman Peterson, the storied company, uh, it sold for 130000 just a couple weeks ago. So I did want to mention that. But this 62 was definitely surprising. It was one of the surprises for me for 2024 so far. I know we're not that far into the year, but a quarter of the year is already gone, believe it or not. And this car topped out at 38,800 on the bid. And I want to talk about potentially why and why it's a head scratcher to me. Now, at the end of this video, I'll link to the in-depth review that I did. And during that uh, review, I briefly touched upon, touched upon Larry Highbloom's uh, 62 that sold about a year ago, a little less than a year ago, and it was May 2023, and he had this car 33 years, give or take, and it was also a 62, also that bluish color. And when you looked at you know this car, it had a lot of money put into it, uh, the, you know a concourse uh, style restoration, and you go wow, okay, that's where it brings you know 150k. So this car here, obviously not on that level, but certainly if we look at it, you know, to me and in, in my review, like I, I really gave it a very very solid review in my opinion because I think like being around these cars as long as I have and just, you know, reading about them and studying every aspect and, you know, working on them uh, on my own personal cars for the most part, you know, they're, it's getting harder to find like an original style car or an original car. And I think if we look at uh, the recent sale of, and if we just type in Lincoln, that's the easiest thing to do. Uh, you could type in Lincoln Continental is typically what I do. But if we scroll down here, uh, this 63 just sold for 105 k Now, obviously, it had a little bit of a draw because it was a single-family-owned car, and that is – that piques a lot of people's interest, especially collectors, because they go, wow, you know, this isn't a car that's been bounced around 20 times in the last X amount of years. And it just was so original. And to me, uh, it it brought a strong price, 105 k it, it It's a little bit mind-blowing to me that this one didn't break the 40 k mark. Now, um, there were some people in uh, the commenting that, you know, kind of thought that, you know, maybe it had to do with, you know, people feeling like there's some some different repairs that were going to be needed. Uh, certainly the photos didn't show that there was a lot of rust um, and the seller even mentions that. He says, thanks to everyone that bid and added comments to the auction. It's kind of a head scratcher. You can actually work on these uh, cars. This is not a Tesla or some new car that you have to plug into a computer to fix. Uh, the seller goes on to say, in his opinion, the community missed a good one here, which I agree with. I will end up selling it to someone in my neighborhood. In the meantime, I'll enjoy it with the family in the spring and summer, which I thought, you know, was a, a very, you know, positive comment. It wasn't, um, you know, passive aggressive or anything like that. It was just, hey, this is the facts. Uh, he did also, again, this is a key thing for anyone that's looking to potentially sell in the future on Bring a Trailer. You want to be active in the comments. He says, um, he looked for, uh, he said, this is another insightful comment. I looked for eight months before finding the car. The car drives smooth and reliable. Um, I suggest looking at other Lincolns that have sold on the website. The car should not be on the low end of the scale. And I certainly agree because I've seen cars that this is the, the head scratcher in the kind of the Lincoln community. I see cars that are not even to this level that have sold for more money, you know, and I, th I sometimes feel like people, Maybe they don't do the research. I mean, maybe this was a bad day or a bad, you know, week where the people looking weren't looking, or or maybe it was the color, uh, and somebody just goes, eh, you know, I really want a black Lincoln, but I don't want to have to change everything, you know, so I can under understand that. Uh, still, kind of doing control F. You know, there were people that were kind of like they kind of felt sorry for the for the seller. Uh, if we keep, um, 
there's a few things in here. Uh, this is where he says there are no leaks on the top. I was told the hydraulic system needs to be bled and fluid checked. The rust on the car is surface rust from rock chips. Nothing in the car needs to be kind of cut or replaced. All the windows and locks work. He ended up uploading a video of that. I had all of that gone through new brakes and suspension with new rear leaf springs and trans, uh, and the transmission of motor were rebuilt in 2011 the car has 3000 miles on it. Again, you typically won't see, you know, a lot of times you're going to see like maybe a family inherits a car and they don't have the money or they don't have the desire to put any money into a car. And like, you're getting something that you go, Hey, it's original, but it needs everything. And you're starting in a tough place the the gentleman that owned this had you know they had put money into it and money had been put into the car i think even before he purchased it uh this is where the person had asked about uh any leaks in the uh which i want to mention something here in a minute about uh the earlier year lincolns uh again you could just see that uh, he was very active in here so something to keep in mind and, and i i don't think in my reviews i really mention this a lot it's sometimes hard to tell if um unless the seller states it to bring a trailer it is sometimes hard to tell if the hydraulic system has been upgraded and for those that don't know in 61 2 and 3 they used, I think it was all three years, and someone could chime in. You know, someone might go, "Oh no, they changed that in '62." I, I think it was '61, two and three, that they used uh, a brake fluid for the hydraulic system for the most part. And now, almost every single person will tell you that you need to use Type F, the same fluid that you use in the steering pump. That has to go in, you know, the 64, 65s, or when you do the full upgrade, as Cashman, John Cashman, would often do or suggest to his customers. So, you know, when you look at uh, these, the, the, you know, the, the, the rams and cylinders, you know, you've got these two guys here, then you've got two here. Uh, the bigger stout ones are for the actual you know, top going back. These are the deck lid uh, cylinders. And if you look at these lines in here, there's a company in Florida that, that sells the entire kit. And if you have a car that has the brake fluid in it, which the one, twos and threes um, came with, you know, eventually when these cylinders and rams start to kind of give out and your lines, you know, blow out because they eventually will, what you typically will then do is you'll, you'll get the full upgrade, right? So whether you're going to do it yourself or you're going to take it to a specialist, um, like Blair Farmer or Blair Farmer, like John Cashman or the team at Lincoln Land, you know, whoever is willing to take the job, um, you basically everything gets upgraded. And the reason one of the reasons for that is if it's a one, two, or three and it has that older fluid, you know, you don't want to put like you don't want to mix the fluid and go, Oh, you know what, I changed the lines, but I kept everything else because eventually these cylinders will blow out. Um, in these uh, rams and cylinders, that's what happened to my '64. It was all original, and we, you know, put a new pump motor on it. And you know, I was like, okay, well, I just want to get the top working. Well, we're we're trying to bleed the system, and then all of a sudden, Blair goes, or I walk over to the driver door, and you could see just fluid pouring out, going underneath the seat, pooling up, and that was because on the uh, the ram. It the seal blew out, and that's what'll typically happen. But but I say all that because you know sixty one twos and threes. I don't think I talk enough about that. That you know eventually, if this stuff hasn't been upgraded, um, you'll have to upgrade it. The parts themselves run two to three grand just for everything. Um, and you know I know sometimes when people are looking at these cars, you know they get worried because if you get a guy that's not or a lady that, that doesn't know a lot about mechanics or, you know, they get a little stressed out, you know, they don't want to be at a local car show. The rain's come in and they go, Oh my God, the top's not working. What am I going to do? I mean, that's a, that's a thing. That's a real thing that you have to worry about with, with kind of any, uh, power top convertible. Some convertibles aren't power top. And obviously that wouldn't be a challenge for you, but regardless, I mean, there's nothing that indicates in this sale or in this listing that, there's any kind of major issue or anything like that. Um, again, there was a few comments in there, uh, you know, where people were saying, wow, you know, I'm surprised it didn't sell. And they said, you know, maybe it was people that were a little worried about, you know, fixing the car um, or, you know, doing some of these things. And to me, bring a trailer does a great job of trying to be as upfront as they can. Uh, so if we type in, 
uh, do control F here and we try to do, I don't think it was rust. I think that they just said um, something with the body, you know, with chips and things like that. All they're trying to do is describe the car. And again, I think that's key because as I've said before, if you can't put eyes on one of these cars, it, it, it it's one of those things where it's a huge risk, you know, and this car might be the most solid car you've ever seen, but my opinion is always, you want to try to get eyes on it if you can, but certainly, you know, looking at it, um, the thing that we never know is, you know, if this thing was resprayed or if, and when, you know, was there any body filler used and things like that. But to me, this looks like a, a nice car and I certainly would have went after it. I, th what the last thing I'll say is what we don't know is what the reserve was. So we can sit here all day and go, wow, I can't believe it only went to 38. You know, if the guy's reserve was 60 grand, you know, it was far off from that. But if it was 40 grand, uh, someone just narrowly missed out on owning what I believe to be a nice convertible. So anyways, let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you so much for the support. Again, if you're new here, uh, please consider subscribing. You can also check out Lincoln Attic Podcast via any podcast app. The newer episodes are available on YouTube uh, in video format. So uh, the older episodes are audio only. Some of those are also available on YouTube. Take care, everyone. Have a great weekend.